So what what if uh, because I mean I think you're opposed to the SGF who is now on suspension, but there's someone in that position who is acting now. So what then happens if they forward the name to the Senate and Senate confirms the new person? Well, if Senate should confirm the person, then it shows that all the noise the Senate has been making with regards to Magu and every other thing, that means they want to stand the law on its edge because that means the Senate, are just, they are just wasting their time basically to confirm because tomorrow the person with prison will come up section 171, which is clear. What about on the general of the Federation? That you are in government does not mean you should stay true to power. You don't come interpret the law this way. Then when you leave government, you start telling us things you should have done, writing your memoirs and tell us all sorts. If the Senate cannot confirm, if they confirm, if they confirm the members of this, this new uh, body, then... What, what, what would they rely on and not confirm that she's not completed her term yet? She has not completed her term. Our removal is not based on the Pension Reform Act, Section 21 of the PRA, which is clear. She was confirmed by the Senate for a five-year term. So a, man, a person confirmed by the for a five-year term, it has to be five-year term. For you to remove her, the conditions are spelled out in Section 21, sub 1. The conditions are spelled out. And to replace her is also, is also spelled out. That anybody that is removed, that has not completed his or her term, the completion of the term, the term has to be completed by somebody from his or her geopolitical zone. Does this apply to other heads too, of course, not, not only for Penco oh, and others? No, for now, this... This is the pension reform, and that's the, the commission. But there are some other agencies, like the CBN, is a fixed term also. You know, when, God, when the president of Canada was removed as CBN governor, he went to court. But we're not able to test this thing in court because he became a mayor and dropped the case. There were saw no need to continue with that case. Even Ransom Onwan. Ransom Onwan's case in 2009, after, by 2011, government begged him to drop the case. So government dropped the EFCC case and told them to drop that case so that the NRC board could be constituted. So we didn't really have the time for the courts to really rule on this. Sense. But looking at it, they could, not con they could not send anybody's name to the Senate, whereas some other one was in court. So also in this case, because the truth is this, by the time we finish talking here, somebody somewhere will say, okay, let's look for something, let's look for, oh, yes, this should come, this one should come. But another thing I want to talk about in all this is the essence of the Pension Reform Act is to build national coercion. If you also look at the Federal Character Commission, build national coercion in appointments and in every situation. So. What is difficult in allowing somebody, okay, we're not appointed by our government. Maybe 2014 was the PDP government, but it's an institution and everybody's a Nigerian. Not, they are not aliens. Mm. So let people, let those institutions remain. The CBI governor was not appointed by this government. Let those institutions remain. The Chukuma Soludo was not appointed by Yaradwa, but he left him. Finish your term and go. All you can do, I will not renew your tenure. That is what you should do. But for you to say, okay, I want my brother, I want my friend to be there. Because when I look at the man, the one the president did uh, designate, that they nominated, okay, they, oh, I've looked at, okay, the history, I look at somebody in the presidency, they've worked together before in the bank and all the rest in UBA, you look at, okay, the man was easy, the man was this. But let us not have those kind of situations. Let us encourage young people in this country, people that are working, encourage them, because that is why we have corruption in Nigeria. Because you do so well, there's no reward for it. You can be thrown out at any time. Then what is, why would you do so much? Well, you say that uh, the DG designate also connected with the PFAs. Uh, where He's the chairman of premium pensions. He's the founding director of premium pensions. Where some of these funds, uh, yes. the pension funds, are domiciled. Yes. So what if somehow they work maybe going through the processes of law and uh, FG has access to those pension funds to build infrastructure? Would anything be wrong with that? Chamberlain, the truth is this. The Pension Reform Act provides for that PENCOM has the power to make regulations. They, they already made regu regulations in 2012, regulation of pension investments or, or pension funds. For you to know, for instance now, for you to invest in any, any infrastructure, it has to have a certain level of credit rating, credit rating, the bonds and everything, they have to have a certain level of credit rating, AA or BB plus, AA, triple A or something. So those things have already been, been, been put in place. So the government cannot just come and say, okay, I want to build the second Niger Bridge, bring this money. What is return on investments? What are these things? Does it meet the criteria under the regulation of pension, pension funds? Does it meet that criteria? And can this money be gotten back? Because this money is for people. Tomorrow they want to retire and they can't have access to that money. Because that is the challenge we are facing with regards to that. So for government to say, government cannot just say want to, what are the conditions? Like private, I don't think government is in even a position to say, okay, private people, investors come, like a PPP arrangement, Maybe like a road that is told that you know, okay, you can get this money back. But can you, are you going to put an infrastructure that is not going to bring them any money back? And we start waiting, and when people retire, they can't have access to those funds, their own funds. You tell them, oh, the money is coming. So these are the issues. 
So that's why you see pension PFAs in Nigeria, really, they try to play on the safe side. Unlike when you have, okay, maybe in Australia, in America, they build a lot, they do a lot of projects. But some of them have, have also gotten their hands burnt with that. So as long as it meets the criteria set out in the Pension Reform Act and the investment of pension reforms regulations, then well, it can go in for so it. So you're saying that the, the Constitution does not supersede the Pension yeah. Reform Act where there's a clash? No. Every law in Nigeria is subservient to the Constitution. The Constitution supersedes. There's no law that can say, okay, no law supersedes the Constitution. So in any area where there's an inconsistency between the Pension Reform Act and the Constitution, the Constitution certainly prevails. So the big bone of contention here now is just to access the pension funds for development. Well, I don't think, yeah, it would that be the big bone? I don't think it's the big bone because if you want to access the pension fund for development, it's there. The criteria is there. So it's for you to meet those criteria. So it's not for anybody. It's not at the pleasure of the uh, DG of Pencom. The PFAs are there. It's not at the pleasure of anybody. The regulations are there. The law is there. The law is setting with regards to investment of pension funds. So does that investment, that thing you want, the, whatever you want to invest it in the infrastructure, does it meet the investment criteria? Does it have that credit rating? Does it have uh, 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 the guarantees that are needed for this thing to be, for this money to be invested? So these are the, it's not just take money, go and invest, then somebody takes it somewhere, no. T tell me more about the risks. The risk with regards to investment of pension funds, the, the most important, the greatest risk is return on investments. Will that money come back? And at what rate will it come back? Because it belongs, for instance, I may mean, I retire. Then 10 years, my money has been used to invest in pension in an asset, maybe a road or a bridge or a hospital. Then when I have to retire, that money is not yet back. They've not been able to draw down on that money. The investment has not paid off. So the investment should pay off. So that's why you have those certain safeguards that have been put in place. So that somebody somewhere will not just... So for instance, now let's talk about the Fort Mainland Bridge. Maybe it's told. It's going to be told, you know, okay, we're going to make certain amounts if we invest like $1 billion there. Within a period of 10 years, maybe we can get to like $1.2 billion. That is what the pension, pension is business. PFAs are there to do business. For now, most of them just invest in government bonds and every other thing. But like I say, very soon government bonds, maybe you, you know you have double digit interest rate on government bonds, maybe it's safe for them. But maybe when it gets to single digit rate, then they will diversify to other investment channels that are productive. That is the key. So it's not like banks that can really take certain risk, but for with regards to pension funds, the risk has to be calculated, the risk you have to know what you are doing and get it right, so that tomorrow somebody does not line up in front of your office and say, we can't assess our pension funds. So at the moment, the thinking is that those funds may be at risk as we're proceeding now. With the way it is, because if, the, if a law has been enacted to guide this industry, what is the mischief? Why did, it, why did this law, why, did, why was it promulgated? It was, it was enacted to solve a problem. When, um, when Obasanjo was president, he saw that there was a problem in the pension industry. They brought in for last year, like, where did that committee on pension reforms? And the president DG was even a member of that committee. Then before she became the commissioner and the head of legal of, Pen of PENCOM, before becoming the DG. So they saw they enacted the law in 2004, amended in 2014. So if that law can just stroke of the pen, you see section 171 of the constitution, you go there, then tomorrow you come, you look for one area, or in regards to form section 4 of the edition, give, give us pension funds, PFAs. What would you do? When you don't agree, the assets is sent to your office that you are, so you, something, something is wrong, then there's a problem. You know, in Nigeria today, it's like going to the doctor. Somebody tells me, some, somebody told me, a pastor said, do you think anybody will go to the hospital today, you check yourself, do everything, and they'll come out that you are free? One thing, they, they say one thing, one small thing or the other. So these are the things. If the state will continue to use that instrument of coercion, the DSS, to cajole people to submission, then we'll have a problem. So you think that that's what's happening? That is what is happening. That right. is what is happening. Let's get a question from Mark. Where? But just quickly, one question here. You talked about Section 21 of the, uh, the Pension Reform Act specifying how uh, you know, any commissioner or even the DG can be sacked. Now, looking at this subsection J, the president is satisfied that it is not in the interest of the commission or public for the person to continue in office and notifies the member in writing to that effect. Uh, yeah, assuming they cite this, would that hold water for you? Well, with regards to that, that's why I say that's the only part that empowers the president to remove a commissioner or a member of the board of PENCOM. So with regards to that, the president is satisfied that it's not in the interest of the commission or the public. Then notify the person right there. It's not in the interest. It's not, it's not vague. It's not omnibus. You tell oh, it's not in the interest. Use your language. But the law is clear. What is the mischief? Because somebody can say, okay, the president can just write and say it's not in the interest of the commission. In what way? Has the person committed an infraction 
or as the pension in the, um, the pension industry have they said okay we've lost confidence in this person these are the reasons the reasons have to be stated what, what did they say we suspect fraud going on somewhere and with regards to that, you know, it's omni, it's omnibus. When you go to court to test that issue, the issue is if you suspect fraud, you don't grant the person fair hearing. Fair hearing has to be granted to anybody. An allegation can be made by anyone. I can come to that and say, oh, there's, a, there's fraud here, there's this here, there's that here. It's an allegation. But you have to give the other person the right to respond. But in this case, my sources, the sources that tell me that they remove the letter, because when this thing was announced, when it was announced um, Thursday through a press release, there was, it was just an issue of new, new agencies. There was nothing saying, oh, dissolution, that the board has been dissolved. So my own point was, are we going to have two digits at the same time? Because if she had gone to court at that time, the issue is that you've not told the person to go. You've appointed somebody she, else. She wasn't written? She wasn't. She's, she's, she just, so. the letters were given to them on Friday, as I heard. That's when the DSS came in. The letters of disengagement was given on Friday. And it was based on Section 7, 171 of so the Constitution. So she goes to court now? I don't know. If I was in a position to advise her, if I was in position to see the DG to the advisor, she should go to court because 171 does not. Pension Reform Act is, is this, it has been created already that this is, these are the areas, these are the ways you can be removed. Okay. So Section 171 cannot suffice here. All right, Ndoka Emwendiko, a legal practitioner. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you. We'll be back in a moment. Don't go away.